Hello nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your week in Nerddom TV edition for the week of August 27th, 2018. This week in TV, we've got updates on the new season of Channel Zero. Star Trek Discovery's got some things that they're going to be revealing in this season. We've got all kinds of stuff to talk about, so let's just hit up the intro real quick. Quiet on the set. Rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Telek. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander Worf, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On Generally Nerdy. You're listening to... Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. First thing for TV this week, guys, we're talking about Channel Zero. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, this is sci-fi's horror anthology, not to be confused with FX's horror anthology, which we will likely be talking about very, very soon, uh, American Horror Story. This is Channel Zero. And unlike American Horror Story, <laughs> this one's a lot more hit and miss, but also they recast the entire cast to be redundant, uh, every season that they have uh, this this on. So you don't know who you're getting and so on and so forth. I mean, there was a casting announcement, but it wasn't really anybody I knew. So we we're not going to talk about the casting. What we are going to talk about, though, is uh, what this season is going to be about, because they base each season on a different cre creepy pasta episode. So, or essay, I'm not entirely sure which is the, what or originates the creepypasta stories, if it's all text and then they turn it into the audio show or vice versa or what the situation is, but it's based on a creepypasta. Um, this creepypasta is going, is, uh, the hidden door, but the name of the season is called the dream door. Uh, da, 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 da. the creepypasta was written by Charlotte Bywater. Um, I'm not familiar with anything else she's written. Maybe she's a, a well-known name in horror fiction, but not one that I recognize. Uh, and the so the 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 casting. Oh, the, we are going to talk about the casting real quick, just because I do know who the announcement was. The other it was the other the rest of the cast that I didn't recognize. Barbara Crampton uh, was just cast as. Uh, I, as a, a matronly figure, I can't remember exactly whose mom it is, the, the wife or the husband's mom, but she is from, for those of you familiar with the genre, she's from Reanimator and Chopping Mall and From Beyond, but kind of most notably Reanimator. So that's pretty, pretty big news. But this season, so the, the real quick synopsis is, uh, the season is set to follow two newlyweds, Jillian and Tom Hodgson. Uh, they each have secrets. They each bring secrets into their marriage. When they discover a strange door in their basement, those secrets start to threaten their relationship and their lives. Uh, it's it sounds so freaking cheesy. Sometimes, like the first and second season of Channel Zero, it's legitimately creepy, and there's a lot of what is going on. What is going on? Why am I still watching this? What is going on? Uh, and then there's other times, like the last two seasons, of really... Now, I don't understand what's going on, but in order for me to keep my sanity, I must see to the end of the season. Uh, so hopefully this will be more of the former and less of the latter, though it is always a crazy ride when you're watching Channel Zero, so... I, I'll be along for at least the first half of the season, because that's usually about where it starts to go bad, if it goes bad. Uh, so, definitely, definitely going to be keeping our eyes peeled for these episodes. I couldn't catch when it was going to start airing, though I'd imagine it is uh, sometime either September or October, because that is the approximate time that generally horror things start. But that's all we have for Channel Zero, so we're going to move next into Star Trek Discovery. Now, I know there's all kinds of updates that, uh, things that are happening in the Star Trek universe. The one that I really, really wanted to talk about this week is the look of the Klingons in this Discovery series. So, they've talked about the fact that 
one of the reasons they did they did the makeup for the Klingons the way that they did is because they wanted a they wanted to have their own unique look to the entire universe so that you could know that you were watching Discovery and they kind of wanted to keep it fresh but myth mythologically speaking mythology wise uh, the they can get away with it because this is before the Klingon evolution. I forget exactly what it's called. I'm not super up on my trek. If you know if you know what I'm talking about, there's a point in the Klingon history in which the entire race evolved effectively, like changed the way they look. And and it's brought up once in uh, the Next Generation where Worf says he doesn't want to talk about it effectively. So. This season, they're teasing the lead makeup and effects artist Glenn Hetrick says that we are going to, or is alluding to the fact rather, he didn't say explicitly, but he's alluding to the fact that we are going to see that evolution soon, um, kind of implying that it was going to happen this season. I don't know. I. <laughs> If you're gonna do that, A, yes, I understand that the fans are really upset about the way the Klingons look, but keeping even keeping that in mind, I feel like season two might be a little too early to do that, because that's gonna be distracting. That's going to distract from the rest of the story. It's gonna be, is it gonna happen this season? Or this episode, rather? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I there is a definite way to do it in in such that it's not distracting, but I uh, I don't know I don't know what that is. But I'm also not the showrunner, nor do I have anything to do with the actual show, so I'm sure they've got it figured out. Hopefully, I just I honestly feel like there's a really really steep cliff where it's it works it works it works it works and then all of a sudden no it's distracting and now we can't focus on anything else but the way the dang klingons look so exciting but with a heavy dose of trepidation with that excitement um that's all we're talking about for star trek discovery and that brings us into time machine uh the hg wells book is getting another uh film adaptation film it's tv um and it's actually digital anyway but uh, it's been it's been adapted a million freaking times throughout the history of film and now a uh, british tv company the it's a lot of words all at once british tv company sky hey hey look at that uh is developing it for obviously for to air in britain um I just, I, this is another thing. I'm not sure if this is needed, though one could argue most of our entertainment, if not all of our entertainment is questionably needed, whether or not we actually need it is very, very up for debate. And, and, and kind of, if you think about it, Sherlock Holmes has also seen a number of iterations and many of them have been really, really good. The specifically the last two, the one Benedict Cumberbatch and, 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 uh, Robert Downey Jr. as Sherlock Holmes have been fantastic, have been excellent. Um, and then the other one that was on American television with the kid from, uh, Hackers was okay. And Lucy Liu for some reason, because diversity yeah so like yeah i can i really like time machine I, I really like hg wells in general so i feel like this one is going to be like uh has a lot of fantastic potential because it's television whereas most of the previous iterations have been movies and there's been some pretty good movies based on the time machine so coming at it from an episodic standpoint you can bring uh, the your main character through time and two different time periods in every episode, but we already have two other shows on television doing that, Timeless and Legends of Tomorrow. So you've got some pretty stiff competition. Not that Timeless is all that good. It's pretty bland. But Legends of Tomorrow is pretty good. And there's a, there's a great motivating factor behind both of those. Effectively, it's the same motivating factor behind both of those. They're trying to stop time-traveling villain. What's going to be the motivating factor for uh, the H.G. Wells adaptation? Is it going to be the same as the book where it's just to prove that he can and then he gets, starts getting lost? Or is it going to be time traveling to, to stop a time traveling villain? 
In which case, we already have two of those and we're talking in circles. Do you, do you see where I'm going with this? Potential. I really feel like the potential is going to be squandered, but the potential exists. And we're moving on to something that I'm super excited about. Apple TV has announced that they're going to be creating a series based on the Isaac Asimov classic Foundation series. Yes, we are getting a streaming, albeit, but still episodic iteration of the Foundation. Uh, showrunners are going, and this is even bigger. Showrunners for this show are going to be David S. Goyer. We've talked about him in the past, and if you don't know the name, then you haven't seen the Bat, the Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy. He was uh, sometimes writer and sometimes producer on that trilogy, so he's got some pretty good chops when it comes to ad adapting uh, fiction. So uh, David S. Goyer and Josh Friedman, whose name I didn't really recognize, but he is uh, producing on Avatar 2. So again, some, some pretty high esteem comes with these two showrunners. Uh, that's all of the information that we could find so far. There's no uh, announcement of who's going to be writing, starring, anything like that. How even they're going to be adapting, because the first book is just a collection of... Uh, oral history, effectively, uh, very, that's very s sporadic throughout the course of a few hundred years. So are they going to, I, I would imagine they're going to be borrowing pretty liberally from the later books in the series, as well as from the, uh, the new Foundation trilogy that has happened posthumously for Asimov. Uh, the Asimov Foundation has hired I, I believe there's only the three of them. Three books. Uh, they, they, they commissioned three science fiction authors to write three more Foundation books uh, called the New Foundation Trilogy. I've read two of the three, and they are legitimately good. They're not quite Asimovian good, but they're worthy of being in that same universe. So, uh, I would again, I would definitely imagine they're going to be borrowing heavily from, if nothing else, the later books in the, the series. There are six books in the Asimov series. There are, and then also because the at least two of the three new Foundation trilogy books deal fill in a lot of those holes. They're going to be borrowing pretty heavily from those as well. Either way, yes, and yes, please, and take all my money. <laughs> Next on our list is Big Bang Theory. This is not news. Even if you didn't know this before watching this episode, uh, the Big Bang Theory is coming to an end. This is going to be their last season. There's a lot of clickbaity crap out there that's that's saying Big Bang Theory's been canceled. No, 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 no. The series is coming to an end, but it hasn't been canceled. There was no, they're they're not. Oh, get rid of those nerds. No, it was everyone involved was like. All right, this has run its course. Let's be done. Uh, they've been talking about it all freaking summer, basically since before the last season, season eleven. Before that season came to an end, they were they were questioning if there was going to be a season thirteen. Uh, so by the time we get to the beginning of season twelve, which hasn't even started airing yet, it's not really a surprise. They, they said, "Yeah, we're." We're good with this. We went two years longer than Seinfeld, two years longer than Friends, which are basically our historical competitors because this is to nerds what Friends was to uh, 20 something post yuppies, I guess. Uh, there was, yeah. <laughs> I, it's, yeah, I, it, it's good. It's done. They kind of beat that horse <laughs> long past death. Um, still enjoyable to watch those. I, I, I still, I understand we've talked about this as well before that, uh, nerds have a big issue with this show because it's nerds as punchline and not nerds as, uh, regular people. And I don't buy that argument. I, I feel like, sure, it's caricaturization of nerds, but that's what sitcoms do. Again, we've had that conversation. We're going to move on. Our last bit of TV news this week is Netflix news. Uh, the original X-Men of DC, that's right, the Doom Patrol, who inspired the X-Men over at Marvel. Uh, uh, there's, do your history, we're not going to do that. Uh, they did a pretty interesting casting announcement recently. They just cast Brennan Fraser as Robot Man slash Cliff Steele. Um, Brennan Fraser hasn't really done a whole lot recently, so 
by all means, give the man some work. He's very enjoyable to watch. He's not the best actor in the world, but this is just television, so whatever. Um, but, like, physically, he kind of fits the way you would imagine that character translating from the page, even though he's not even going to be Robot Man on screen. He's just going to be the voice of Robot Man, and he's going to play Robot Man uh, in, in, in flashbacks before he becomes Robot Man. Uh, I can't remember the name of the guy who's going to be Robot Man on screen, but he's not going to be doing the emoting. He's just going to be doing the physical aspect of things, and it's, the rest of it's going to be Brendan Fraser. Uh, I yeah, Again, sure, I, Doom Patrol is going to be a good series from all uh, accounts so far. This is not a bad casting choice. This, I feel like, is almost as great as Ruby Rose as Batwoman. And if you still don't believe Ruby Rose is going to be a great Batwoman, then y yeah, I got nothing for you. <laughs> but that's where we're ending TV this week, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching all the way to the end. What did I miss? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down below. If, though, you want to go deeper into the conversation, jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. That is where we can have a deeper dialogue, or you can just find all of the freebies, all of the social media links, and get your nerdy swag in the store on generallynerdy.net. If you would rather support the channel a little more directly, there is a Patreon, patreon.com slash generally nerdy. Check out that. There's four tiers. Bottom tier is just a dollar a month. Patreon.com slash generally nerdy. Go there. But if you are new to this channel, click that subscribe button. If you like this episode, click the like button. If you are falling behind in your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap that box right there to the left of my face to do that. But before we go, do any of the things and all of the stuff, guys, always, always remember that if it is generally nerdy, it's probably here. <laughs>